Hello and welcome to my strange Indonesian kitchen, complete with wooden fish on the wall. I decided to change my location because my girlfriend hates my uh, recording videos up in the office all the time. She doesn't like my backdrop, uh, but anyway, that's why I'm down here, just for a change. So as you may or may not know, I've been speaking and thinking and putting out content on the topic of retroactive jealousy for almost 10 years now. And a common question I get from people, particularly guys, is guys who wonder, maybe the only way to beat retroactive jealousy is to simply keep your relationships simple, don't get into anything too serious, keep your relationships casual, because maybe that's how you can beat retroactive jealousy. So in today's video, I want to address this very important question about keeping things simple and beating retroactive jealousy. My name is Zachary Stockhill from retroactivejealousy.com, and since 2013, I've been helping men and women from all over the world, every corner of this beautiful planet, overcome retroactive jealousy and often save their relationships. If you'd like more information about my work or you'd like to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, please visit my website at retroactivejealousy.com. So basically what prompted this video was a comment I got on my YouTube channel. And the comment basically was, the easiest way to beat retroactive jealousy is to not have feels. Keep it simple, don't ask, don't tell, and just have fun. Now later on, the commenter clarified that you know, basically he needed a period of just keeping things simple and keeping things very light in his relationships. I'm gonna assume this was a retroactive jealousy sufferer. And again, this is a comment I've heard from a lot of guys over the years who maybe they struggled with retroactive jealousy intensely in their relationship, they break up and they just wanna be single for a while. By the way, if it's your first time on my channel, the term retroactive jealousy refers to painful, unwanted, intrusive thoughts about your partner's past and what I call mental movies relating to your partner's past dating experiences or past relationship history. And this is by no means something that just impacts, for example, straight men. I've had many students and clients who are either gay men or straight women or lesbians, transgender, I mean, you name it. This is not an issue that just impacts straight guys, despite what you may see online. But anyway, coming back to the theme of today's video, is that the path to beat retroactive jealousy? Just keep things simple, you know, avoid feels, just keep things light, keep things casual, never get into a committed relationship. First off, I think it's important for a certain type of person to have some time where they can be single and simply enjoy themselves and maybe pursue more casual relationships, obviously without lying to and, and trying to hurt people. But if you feel like that's what you need at a certain juncture in your life, you should pursue that. My policy is just honesty above all else. Don't lead anyone on, don't go breaking hearts, don't be disrespecting people and lying and cheating and all that stuff. But if you wanna keep things casual for a while and that's truly important to you and that feels like the right move, I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with that. I've had several periods of my life, particularly in my 20s and I would say my early 30s, where I wanted to be single for a while. And it wasn't because I was this, you know, going out every night and getting drunk and going on Tinder and swiping furiously and all the rest. The point was I wanted some time just to be single, to kind of keep my relationships relatively light, to figure myself out a little more. And for me, I feel like I needed that time in order to feel truly comfortable committing to someone long-term. I needed to really kind of figure out my wants, my desires, and all the rest. But my motivation for doing this was not, oh, I want to avoid retroactive jealousy, so I'm just gonna keep things casual for a while. And if that is your motivation for keeping things light or keeping things simple or not committing to anyone, Personally, I think that's kind of a lousy motivation because you're kind of selling yourself short. And I think you're telling yourself on some level, I am definitely guaranteed to struggle with retroactive jealousy in my next relationship. I'm scared to death of that. So I'm just gonna keep things simple, keep things casual, but maybe it's not truly what you really want. You can't heal from the issue of retroactive jealousy by simply avoiding catching feelings for someone. You can't avoid struggling with retroactive jealousy by simply avoiding long-term relationships. And if you're flirting with that idea, if you're considering living the rest of your life, just being single and keeping things light and keeping things casual, just because you don't wanna struggle with retroactive jealousy, to my mind, that's gonna make for a pretty sad, pretty lonely, pretty depressing future. And believe it or not, I have heard from some people, again, mostly guys who have written to me, basically saying that is or was their strategy. I'm just gonna keep things light. I'm gonna keep things casual. I'm never gonna get involved with a, a woman seriously. I'm not, never gonna get involved with anyone seriously. I'm just gonna you know, be single and casual and non-exclusive and that's how I'm gonna live the rest of my life. Again, I wanna make it clear that I am not judging anyone's choices. I believe people have the freedom to do whatever they want as long as they're not hurting other people and as long as they're not lying. 
And if you genuinely want to stay single or a bachelor or whatever for the rest of your life, because it's truly in line with your deepest core needs, then by all means, have a great time and live true to that if that's what you want. But if you're resigning yourself to never experiencing the bliss and the comfort and the thrill and the security and the intimacy of a long-term relationship, if you're avoiding all that just because you want to avoid retroactive jealousy, again, to my mind, that's a pretty depressing idea. That's a pretty long and lonely road that you're going to be walking. And as I say endlessly on this channel and in my books and in my online courses and all over the place, on podcasts, all over the place, overcoming retroactive jealousy is 1000% possible. If you don't believe me, you can read literally dozens, maybe over a hundred at this point of testimonials on my website from ordinary everyday people who put in the work, who got a handle on this issue for good. And these were not people who simply said, okay, I'm gonna avoid loving anyone because I'm, I don't wanna struggle with retroactive jealousy. These were people, for the most part, who attacked retroactive jealousy head on in their current relationship. And by the way, I've been doing this work, as I said earlier, since 2013, and I've kept in touch with a lot of these retroactive jealousy survivors over the years. Most of them are either former coaching clients or former students in my flagship online course, Get Over Your Partner's Past Fast. I've exchanged emails with some of these people, sometimes five, six, seven, even eight years later. And guess what? They're still doing really well. I'm still doing really well. I was once a retroactive jealousy sufferer at the extreme end of the spectrum. When I wrote in my first book, Overcoming Retroactive Jealousy, that my then girlfriend's past was the first thought I had when I woke up in the morning and the last thought I had when I went to bed at night, I wasn't kidding. That was my life. It was pure hell. I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. But guess what? That's in my rearview mirror. That's a part of my history. And I am not the only one. Again, there are hundreds, if not thousands of us around the world who feel the same. So if you're feeling despair, if you're feeling hopeless, if you feel like just giving up on any thought of a future long-term relationship, there is hope. You can beat retroactive jealousy whenever you want, either when you're single or in your current relationship. It's simply up to you to take the steps. On that note, this month I'm celebrating the release of my newest project. It's called The Path to Peace. It's an all new video masterclass specifically for retroactive jealousy sufferers who have questions about their partner's past values, who have questions about their compatibility with their partner. Not every retroactive jealousy sufferer wonders if their partner's past is actually potentially a deal breaker. Not every retroactive jealousy sufferer wonders whether or not their partner's past matters this class, The Path to Peace, is for those retroactive jealousy sufferers who have those questions. Those retroactive jealousy sufferers who wonder maybe their partner's past is actually a problem. I based The Path to Peace on almost 10 years of one-on-one -on -one coaching with hundreds of retroactive jealousy sufferers around the world who had those questions about compatibility and values and their partner's past choices and all the rest. If you want quick clarity and peace of mind regarding whether or not your partner's past truly matters, Click the link in the description to learn all the details about my newest video masterclass, The Path to Peace. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening to me today. If you got anything out of this video, please take a minute to let me know by clicking the like button below. Please also be sure you are subscribed to my channel to be notified of new videos moving forward. And while you're at it, hit the stupid like button to tell me that you like this video because apparently that's important for the YouTube algorithm gods. Hit the like button, subscribe, comment, all that stuff. And I'll talk to you again very soon.